Okay, so good day everyone. Um, my name is Shams Adina and today we're going to present uh, chapter 10 for the book Art for Data Science, which is Data Import. And what's in this chapter is three sections. So we're going to see uh, the most common readers functions how to pass a vector and how to pass a file and how to write a file. So these are the common sections that are there in this chapter. Unfortunately, I have not even tried any of the exercises because of the time frame. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. Yeah, so and as well, uh, the final part of the chapter had really pointed out other ways to read different kind of data. So let's go again. So uh, the readers function was developed, as you know, by Hadley Weekend's uh, purposely to read flat files quickly. Uh, so flat files are files that do not have any interconnected relations like tables, like maybe just a normal file in our Word file. That's called flat file. So uh, unfortunately, the built-in way to read files in this R, they are not that powerful enough, and these serve as a replacement for this kind of function, read at the table and read at the, read the CSV. So read, read this function, read table and read underscore CSV are the analogous function that replace these kind of this R functions. So these are some of the common uh, ways in which we read files with readers function. These are some of the common functions to read files in reader. The first one is reader read the uh, underscore CSV, which reads command deleted files. So any files that face with comma, we read with CSV. Read CSV2, this semicolon, because some countries or some files use semicolon to the separate file. And we read TSV, which is tab separated files. So, and the one of the large umbrella of these files is read delim, which reads in file with any delimiter. So, all of these first three, they are special kind of read delim. So you may be using read delim to specify the kind of way in which files are separated without using any of these three. So read delim is the uh, the biggest umbrella, and read CSV, read CSV two, they are the kind of sub uh, charts which you may use them or not. So um, as we go, let's see how to use these functions. So uh, yeah, so I have my yeah. Yeah, so it starts from here. So I normally <laughs> prepare the slide after I've been paid. So, yeah. So if you look at this, this is the first file read delay. And we specify this file and this delimiter with comma spreaded. So with this read delay, we can read any file. What we need only is just to read delay, we say comma. And or we can put read delim, we can put semicolon, or we can put read delim, we can put tab. This is how we use the read delim. So uh, as we said, um, these CSV files, they are the sub way in which we use read delim. So if you want to read files which are specifically using comma, then we use this function read CSV. One of the thing with these kind of reader functions is that when you read a file, they will automatically tell you the columns and the columns type. So this is telling us that um, this file challenge has X column and Y, and this is double and this is logical, which in which uh, the, uh, this R function, this R read the CSV, they do not that. Also we can read 
an inline CSV for experimental purpose. So we can say read CSV, we can put this and supply these values. That way we, because here we have this and we have this, it can give us this. Another way is uh, to read CSV is what is called chaining. Uh, if you look at this, it's another way in which we read CSV. But sometimes you may read a CSV in which the first lines, they are not numbers, so you may specify to skip. So we use this skip argument to skip. To skip. Here we have first line and we have second line. So using skip will tell us that the first and second line, they are not part of the CSV, right? Another way to read, to do, to skip any non part of the data, uh, the, um, or part of the data is to use hash. This is a common way to do that. So we can see here we have this one. So this tells us that any line that starts with hash symbol is not part of the file. So this is, these are common ways in which uh, we can read a CSV. Another way is, uh, uh, to read CSV in which data doesn't have uh, column names. This is common way in which uh, we don't have that. So in that way, we can actually specify the column names equals to false. In that way, if you look at this, these are just string of numbers and we don't have the uh, column names. So this one uh, R will automatically assign uh, names from X1 to Xn. You see, have three column x1 x2 x3 and this is the way in which we create that and if you remember this one two three are not integers they are double if they are integer we need to put i think l right so yeah so if you look at this uh yeah this one's here no i i think hello yeah yeah, I think I think here for for some reason it was recording it already as um, as a double. Sorry. I think uh, originally it was already recording it as a double without we didn't need to write the L's. Yeah, what I'm saying is if we have one, traditionally we expect one to be an integer mm. by default. One is integer number, of course, mathematically in other programming languages like Python. One is an integer, C1 is an integer. But one of the thing with R is that a single number is not represented as integer, but rather as double. If you want to represent a single number as an integer, you need to put a start this down. If we have this. So here we have, if you look at this here, this first column, they say it's double, so let's see this. Oh, look at it, it changes. Oh, because they are inside character. Mm. Yeah, because they are inside character. Yeah, so what I'm saying, Alan, um, here, this one. Um, one. I think if you want to make a column um, any other data type, you need to give it as call types. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that one. Uh, hmm? what, you mean call types or call name? Well, call types oh, for call the name type. type and call names for the name of the column. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So another interesting thing is to, if you have uh, something that is uh, any is to specify within the data is to use any argument and specify anything that comes within the data is any. So if we read this CSV, if we have here any, this will be put as any. Yep. So that is it. And finally, is we can choose files using read CSV interactively. So if we have this, maybe we want to choose a file from our computer, we can put read CSV something this way, and we can put this file that choose. So here when we have this, it can allow us to open the file. Yeah, yeah. It can allow us to open something like this and choose a file to read from the our computer. So I think this is all about uh, using uh, 
TSB, which is one of the leader, most widely used function. Uh, however, we have many others. Um, but um, the last part of this uh, in the book talks about the difference, many difference between read TSB and uh, read the TSB. And the reason why they are talking mainly about this function, the function, this is the most commonly widely used. So the first thing they say the um, okay, yep. So the first thing they said uh, is that um, the read CSV, read the uh, underscore CSV is faster, but slower than data the table. I have not uh, used this. Anyone use this one? Fred, Fred in data the table. I have no use. So they say read uh, underscore CSV are faster than read table, but they are slower than these, and I guess this is not part of base r right data the table is it part of base r no okay so again read csv produce table and one of the advantage of read underscore csv it produce table while read the csv produce uh, traditional data frame and also read underscore csv does not convert character vectors to factors it normally read them as character and finally, they are more reproducible than compared with the read the CSV. All right. So these are the main differences uh, compared in between the two. So uh, uh, then this takes us to the next thing, which is called passing a vector. So the key problem the reader solved is passing the flat file into two. And what we mean by passing is the process of taking a text and turning it into a rectangular table where each column is appropriate part. So this is one of the things we, uh, we aim to do any kind of data analysis. We aim to change any file to kind of uh, rectangular table where each column contains appropriate part. So this is one of the key things leader tries to address by taking any flat file and putting it into that way. So there are three ways leader solve the problem of passing. Uh, the first one is vector file parser, and we have what is called column specification, and also we have rectangular parser, and uh, we'll see what that means. So the first one, vector parser turns a character vector into most specific type. So what we mean by this is uh, a character vector, a uh, vector parser takes in uh, character vector, maybe uh, integer, uh, and turns it into specific type. I will soon see that in the next slide. Okay, so the first one we're going to see is passing a vector, which is this. So to pass a vector, we use this function. Pass, then something like this here, which can be logical, integer, day. And this function takes a character vector and returns the most specialized vector. Yeah. So uh, when we have path uh, logical, this function will take a character and return a logical vector. I mean, yeah, a logical one. And there are particularly eight important passes that are passing a vector. And uh, all these pass vectors, they are the building blocks of reader. Yeah, but they are also, they have their own their importance in on their own, but they are the main building blocks of reader. So let's see how this function works. So, yeah, so passing a vector, the first one here we can see is um, we have a character vector and when we have a pass logical, it will change this character vector to logical vector. So that's what we have here. Again, if we have another character vector and we want to change this character vector into integer vector, we call path integer, which is this. Another way um, is... So, yes. Sorry, yeah, just, just uh, something I want to try out. So how about if you try on line 183? Uh, if you, yes, if you try having um, pass logical in there. 
Name one. No, 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 just one, as it was before. But uh -huh. instead of um, passing the integer. You mean, you mean here, right? No, no, here, 183. Okay, one. Yeah, but now, no, no, just, just one, just uh -huh. one. And uh, instead of using pass integer, we use pass logical. Ah, so uh, we're gonna see that one. So uh, logical, okay. So if you look at this, we have errors. Mm. And uh, we will see what happened, what does that mean? So in this case, these values, they are not uh, logical values. They are integers. Let's see an example here. So this is a date, passing a date, which is correct with pass. But this is, uh, this is the problem. If person fails, you will get a warning and the failure will be missing in the output. So mm -hmm. in this case, if you look at it, what this is, this is integer, right? Yeah. What, about, what about this character? What about this? That's a double. double. What about this integer? So what do we expect from here? We are gonna have how many passes? This one will pass, this one will pass. This one will not pass because it's what? Double. Mm -hmm. This one will not pass because it's character. This one will not pass because it's character. So if you see this, we have how many failures? Failures, three, one, two, no, one, two, three. Can you see? Okay. Right? And it will report the expected and uh, the failure. So if you look at this here, and uh, in three, four, five, which is three, four, five, we have the errors, the rows, and the color. Uh, mm -hmm. What do we, and the column, yeah. So what is the expected value? We expect integer here, but it's not an integer. Here also, what do we expect? Integer, but there is no trailing characters. We don't need trailing characters. This is the problem. And mm -hmm. also here, we need an integer. So it will report an error. However, it will show us the result but without those errors. So if you look at this here, that we pass the x here, can you see that? So let's call the x here. Yep. So you can see this is the problem we have, N A N A. But what about the result? So can you see that? Okay. Yeah. So you can see we have this, it turns this one, one, two, three, one, two, three, and three, four, five. Can you see them here? One, two, three, because they are integers, we pass that. However, others are not integers, so any is shown there. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how to deal with this problem? To deal with this problem, uh, we use, in another way, if we have massive amount of data, we may not be able to see this go through, and so we need to find a better way to find where does that fail, the person fail. So the way to show how person fails is to use the problems function here. So if we use the problem f, it will show us the expected value. Can you see that? But, um, if your data is very small, you can actually see from, but if you have large amount of data, so you need to uh, see, uh, call this, use this function to see where you have a problem. So these are the eight passing we have as logical integer and stuff like that. Now, the next thing to look at this is to take each of these parts uh, and see how it works. Now, taking the first one, which is number, uh, if you look at these uh, numbers, people write numbers differently. Some use dot and some use these to separate numbers, as you can see in US and Europe, and some numbers are written with character with them, while others numbers are grouped together. For instance, here we group this one into three and two. Now, the, point, the issue is how to solve this problem so that we can deal with any number. The first problem using these and this reader provides a local option in which we say, okay, the local use these, full stop, or use comma. Again, to deal with this issue of having a character attached with a number, the reader provides a pass number, which is a general function to pass any kind of number. Oh, 
story to me. Uh, yeah. And the last one to deal with this is to use the combination of pass number and local. Yeah, as pass number. So let's see how to do that. So passing the number, as you remember, we're gonna see uh, eight different kind of way to pass. The first one is a number. So this is the way in which, so this is pass double. And naturally, if we want to pass double, yeah, we pass a double, yes, this is a double number. But how can we pass a number that is double with this? Because the double naturally use default way of presenting numbers from US because as they say, they use American system. So the default is dot here, one, two, three, two, three, something like that. But what about this? So you use local is to go to the decimal mark, which is where the argument and say this is comma, and this will be fine. It can be. But here, if it is uh, full stop, then we don't need that because it is default, uh, by default is that one. Now, how to address the issue as we see of having a string inside a number? So we say use reader use pass number. In material of whether it is float, this I mean floating point, integer, or anything, reader will just pick that digit number. So here we have this, reader will pick this. Here we have 20%, reader will say. And here we have this, reader will just pick the only number. So that's why here the, same. the pass number here is really useful when uh, passing a lot of text and you want to get in the only numbers that appear in the text. Yeah, so that's why the where pass number will be important apart from currencies here. They say this is particularly useful for currencies and percentage, but also work to extract numbers embedded in text. So we can use pass number to extract numbers that are embedded in the text, and I find this one to be useful. Uh, so the final problem we can address is how can we solve this problem of grouping numbers? So we said we combine using local and using the reader pass number, as we can see here. So uh, pass number here, you can see here, as you see in the American system here, is uh, when this, yeah, so this is the way in which American system divides their number. So naturally you don't need to fall by anything. But what about those that they use dot like in European countries? So you use pass number, we don't use double. So you use pass number and you provide the local and with grouping mark. Like here where we have a separation mark. So here you provide the grouping mark which is dot and you can read that it gives you the same number. Also in Switzerland, this is the way they use their own because they use these kind of things. So we provide the grouping mark to be this. So that is that for number. And let's see how uh, it works for uh, strings. Yeah. So for string, uh, <clears throat> there is very important issue is passing a string because uh, the problem they made mention is that uh, there are different kind of way to represent a number that is called encoding system. So encoding system is a way in which each different character text is have different encoding system before. But now today, all nearly all text use the same encoding system, which is UTF-8. And what they mean is that character to row, for instance, we have this hardly. This means H means 48. A represents this. This representation is what is called ASCAR. That is a mapping of character to string to equivalent digit is called, uh, um, uh, this kind of system is called ASCAR system. But the problem is in early days in computing, there are different ways of encoding. So this kind of encoding use UTF-8. 
Some people use Latin, this encoding system. Some use another encoding system. So in this way, if you have a text here, we have this X1, we have this X2. And when we read this one, it will give us something in gibberish because the encoding system used in this one, it's not standard encoding system used in R. So uh, for us to read this correctly, we need to find uh, past the encoding system. So this X1, the encoding system is called Latin one. And this X2, the encoding system is called G this one. So when we use past character, past character, can you see they give us something meaningful? So this is something like Chinese or something, I don't know. And this and another different thing. But the first way in which we call them, X1 is this, X2 is this, and we read them. Can you see they give us something meaningful? That means they have different encoding system. So you should know that whenever you read a file and you see the content looks gibberish, the first thing you should know is that it uses different encoding system. So now how can you know the encoding system that a particular text is using? That is it. The question, but this could arise, how do you find correct encoding of a text? So this is provided by a reader, which is a function called guess encoding. So given any text, you can say guess encoding, guess encoding, it will tell you what kind of uh, encoding system that has been used if you look at this one, this one is this, and this one is this. So this means that uh, if you are given a system or text and you try to uh, encode past it, and you see that it's using you gibberish, so check the encoding system using this encoding. After you check the encoding system, then you pass it appropriately using this way. You read it and you use it uh, locally and by the encoding system. So that is about um, um, string. But what about the factors? Yeah. So uh, as you know, yeah, factors. So as we know, factors uh, 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 character, but uh, R uses factors to represent categorical variables that have non set values. So for example, here we have the which is character vector, right? And we want to pass it to a factor. Now, we should make sure that the levels we provided because factor uses levels. Here, all the levels here we provided, we have A, we have B, we have C. So that will pass it correctly. However, when you pass a level in which uh, when you pass a level in which we don't have the correct one here, for instance, if you look at this, we have character, we have B, A, B, C, D, but in the levels we don't have B, this will put an error. So all the values in the character must be represented in the levels you are saying. So if you look at this one here, we have, we have one passing failure. Why? Because this is not part of the levels we specify. The next one is date and time. So how can we pass date and time? So passing date and time is something really useful, but uh, it has different ways to do that. But we may look at um, the basic one. So there have, we have three different ways to pass date. Date, pass date time, and pass time. So the first one is uh, date. So the number it passes this way, the number of days in this, and this time, uh, the number of seconds is midnight, this, and the time, the number of seconds is midnight. Sorry, I have not been able to copy this and put it in my slide because time passes. Yeah, so <laughs> I was just going. So let's see how they work. So pass the time. What it does, this, the first one is uh, pass the time it expects uh, did you are dead to be an ISO 8601 format. Uh, the different way it reads is this. Uh, yep. Uh, so the biggest, smallest, the first day is a year, month, day, hour, minute, second day. So this is a way to 
specified specified date time. The biggest which is the year, then month, which is month, then day. Here we have day, then hour and stuff like that. But if you do not specify, uh, you can any one of them is optional. So this is the first one. If you can see here, we do not specify the others. The other one is past date. So this one only expect four digit number, four digit the year. You can see them here. Uh, an optional base, what is four digit the year? Is this or this? So what this means is that you can specify, if you look at this here, we have separator here. So you can specify the separator to be this, dash, or this. Then the month we have here, then the separator and this. So these are basically the three ways and the past time also it has its own way. And if that doesn't fit your own way, you can specify the way you want, the year we have, you can specify different ways. And we have month, we have uh, the day, there are different ways to specify that if the different way doesn't specify it. So uh, the next thing is passing a file. So we have seen how to pass integer, how to pass character, how to pass the time. So if we go back to our uh, schedule for today, uh, the, the next thing is passing a file. So what do we mean by passing a file? So uh, reader pass an individual vector. The big question is how reader pass a file? So there we have seen they read a vector. They read like um, a given vector. So it uses many strategies. The first strategy is it uses a uh, heuristic to get the kind of file. So for instance here, uh, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this. So the first thing reader does is to get the, the, guess the kind of uh, file we have. So that's why he has the reader use heuristic function guess parser to figure out the type of each column are returning the best guess. Thereafter, pass guess uses that guess to pass the column. So here, given this file, we have guess parser. It will guess what this is. So here is guess. Guess parser, it will guess is a time. Guess parser, it will guess this is. So after guessing this, then we use pass number yeah so this is a function here if you look at this pass guess pass guess so if we pass this it will show us this is this so you use the function guess parser and you use pass guess and this is the same way here pass guess parser what is this so it tells you this it will tell you this is a day so if that is a guess then you pass it uh, I mean, it will tell you it's a number. So, uh, but remind you here, we have a uh, character attached to it. And we know that uh, uh, even with the character, this is a number. So since it, gets, it will guess here, if you can see character, so we can pass it as a number. So, but the, here they said, uh, the heuristic tries each of the following rules to find which one in appropriate order. So. The heuristic try to find what kind of these, which type of it using some kind of order, and they specify the order which is these, it's a logical integer and different ways. So finding specification for a file. So um, we have another thing that is called finding specification of file. Now uh, for instance, we have this file CSV here, and uh, we want to find out what it contains. That is, what are uh, inside. There is a special function called specs CSV here. So read reader example here is a special function in reader that allow that give us inbuilt CSV file called challenge that allow us just to read it. This is not a uh, 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 and of a normal function that you'd be using, but just for passport of example, it's called reader example. So here, when we say spec CSV, it will show us, okay, this file has X, 
Y and column, double and column logical. So this is what basically finding specifications of a file means to find what that file, what are the specifications. Of course, you know, we can use many different things uh, like uh, glimpse and stuff and structure, but this is the way in which reader try, because as you see, if you have a CSV, you read CSV, read CSV, read uh, comma, uh, underscore CSV. When you read and you call the function, it will output this. So inside, deep inside the read underscore CSV function, this is what is being called to specify the kind of uh, file in it. So for bigger file, you can often make the specification simpler by changing the default column type using call condense. So if, for instance, we have a file here, which is actually B, you know, so this means that it will give us this kind of output specification, big, large one. Can you see them? Uh, if we, the file is like having maybe 100, so this is, so we can use column condense to actually show what is it you can see here. So this is what reader is doing in bit inside its function to show us this kind of thing. As we are seeing in the first part where we say the reader underscore CSV, it shows one advantage of reader underscore CSV, it shows us this uh, specification of the file of the, the, the data frame in which read the CSV doesn't do that. So this is what is really happening. Now, uh, Let's see one challenging issue in which we, we read the file. So we have a problem while reading a file. So the problem is the default guest parser don't, don't always work for large files. So what this is telling us is here we have a file and we use this. As you can see here, now we are using read the CSV. So if we save this, you can see that. So what is happening here? What is happening here? There is a problem. Alan, what is the problem here? We read a file, challenge the CSV, and we use read the CSV, but it returns something like this. Pass with column specification, yes. So this is the column specification. See, it says the column specification in this file is, we have X, which is column uh, double and logical. So under passing failure, what does this mean? Alan, <laughs> any idea? So what- uh, this, No, I'm just trying to figure it out. Okay, so what this means is that challenging the CSV, read the file that there are failures in it. And it is telling us the first column is double and the second column is logical. But deep down inside this file, the second column one is not logical, it's date and time. So what is this is happening? Let's see. The above will bring two output. The column specification, as we can see here, is the column specification and the error and the first five uh, passing failure. So it will bring the first five passing failure. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what is this telling us is that, let's see the problem. Okay, now, using these problems, uh, yeah. So can you see all the passing failures? Now, if you look at this, this start with from 1001, 1002, 1003, it starts with this. And the actual value here of y, column y, is dead. Not uh, logical. So what is happening here is that this file from 1 to 1,000 is NA. And from 1,001 to the end of the file is dead and time. So what is happening here is that the guess function in reader, guess parser, guess the specification of column wrongly. That is why it is the default guess parser can always work for large files. So here it guess wrongly because the first few files is logical NA and the last, the true value is date and time. That is why we have here. So uh, if you look at, if you go down here, yeah. 
So if we look at the last few rows, we will see that the are dead. they are dead. And uh, yeah, so if you look at uh, see this, we can see that these are dead. So you can see that the last one, they are dead. Now, how to solve this problem? Uh, the net mentioned explicitly, uh, explicitly that when you are dealing with large files, always use stock problems. So when it, you are reading the file, these stock problems will report that there is an error in reading the file. It, the past guesser makes some re, uh, wrong guessing and it will not allow you to continue it will report an error. So that is that for that. So, but there are other strategies. So in this first strategy, what we said is that um, the guess parser here guess the column Y wrongly in the sense that it guesses is illogical while it is not logical. And the correct way to correct that anomaly is to always specify specify the column depth using this column ties as we have already discussed before. So you see column ties, you see the first column is double, the second column is column depth. So here you are sure you specify your data is column is date, the y is date and the x is column double. You don't you don't allow uh, guess passer to guess the specification of the column. So if you look at this, the here we have that. The other strategies here is this. So by default, we are only look at the first hundred rows. So in the previous example, if we see we uh, the reader by default read the only first one lines and makes the guess. So that is why in the previous example, it read the first 1,000 rows and guess because all the 1,000 rows are NA, which we are all likely, and that is why it makes that guess. So we can specify the guess, maximum guess. Here we can we specify the maximum guess. Okay, now this is the same example here. So if you look at this, yeah, because this is maximum is 1,000. So it should specify the Y as double. But what about if we use 101, 1001? Will it specify it as double? Can you see that it guesses it as column dead? So by default, reader guess, uh, uh, read the first 1000 line and make the guess. Unfortunately, this file, the first 1000 files are NA. That is why it guesses that one. Another way in which we can solve the, that problem is to uh, use the combination of type converter and character column. So this is another way to uh, do that. So if you look at this, we read the same file and we say column types. We speak, we specify the column types explicitly without allowing the guest passer to do that. Then we say the column default is column character. So we say we define we specify every column to be character. And now we use what is called type combat to guess what is the column. So this is another option which actually use a guess as well. So here we use this. So we can solve the problem by reading all the column as character and use the type converter. So here we use we read all the columns in the data frame and we use type converter. So this type converter will try to guess every column. So if you look at it here, it gets the first column correct, which is double, and it gets the second column, which is dead, which is correct as well. So you see we have three different ways to do that. Uh, then writing, finally, the last section is uh, writing to a file. So as we have read underscore CSV, we have write underscore CSV, write underscore CSV, you work the same thing. But if you want to write to an Excel, you can write, write Excel CSV, which is the function. And uh, we may have problem as it made mention with write underscore CSV. Uh, the problem we may have is we may lose information. This is very important. The problem with write CSV is that 
when you write your file PSV, CSV, you may lose some important information. Let's look at this example. We have a file here, child three, and if you look at this challenge three, the X here, what is X here? The character, right? What is Y? Mm, okay, I think let me use this. Yep. So we have a variable called challenge four. This is just, uh, this is the material. Okay, so we have X here which is double and we have y which is dead. Now let's see the problem where we have. So if we call write underscore csv and we save this file at challenge pass the csv. What problem do we expect to happen, Alan? Do you have any idea any problem will happen? So the problem that will happen here when we read save this file, remember creating this file, the x is double, the y is dead, right? Now, when we save this file, let's look at what will happen. We save it, let's load this file. Reader, read, this, read underscore CSV. This is the way to read it. When we read this file, look at what happened. Why now returns to logical? Can you see a problem? So, this is the problem with reader, read, uh, write underscore CSV. It changes sometimes the structure of the file when you save it. It turns out that the column is now logical, not dead, as it is used to be. Such behavior makes CSV a little unreliable for catching interim results. You need to recreate the column specifically. So, to solve this problem of reader, write the uh, underscore CSV, the option, the best option is to always use write underscore RDS and read underscore RDS, a uniform wrappers around the base function, base function phase and B. So the base function, from now on, I will avoid using the uh, <laughs> right underscore CSV. So if you look at this, if we use this, we use this right underscore RDS and uh, these, you can see that, okay, these, yeah. So if we use this right, this, yeah, and uh, we write, okay, what do I say? Write challenge three, ah, I need to call it something, six maybe. Uh, challenge six, right? So maybe, maybe this is challenge for this file. And we need to put it, okay, can I do that? Yeah. Maybe we call it this, for instance. Yeah, can you see it? This way, yeah. this function doesn't change this, which is the, even though if you look at this column as three and eight, there are three and eight, but it tells you the correct file uh, uh, property of this column. And another option is feeder package, which does the something. So feeder package does the something as the previous one. It doesn't change the column. So you can see that this is days, this is stuff like that. So uh, this is one of the big issue with the right underscore CSV. So I think for now, maybe we should be using uh, these, either the uh, uh, right underscore RDS or using the feeder function because it doesn't modify your file. And finally, uh, other ways to uh, read the file that has been made mention, uh, we can use even function uh, package to read uh, SPSS, Tata, and SS files. So this package contains different ways to read this kind of structure files. And we can use this function, read SSL, to read Excel files, both this and this. And we use this package along to do that. And uh, for hierarchical data sets that just alike, we can use XML. And that is that for that. Uh, so it is exactly 730. <laughs> And mm -hmm. wrap up our presentation for today. Thank you. Any question? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to look up any uh, questions from the book. Yeah, but nice, good presentation. So, any questions?
Yeah, uh, just just wondering. Uh, so it's my first time to actually even think about uh, storing data using RDS extension. Mm -hmm. And uh, so normally I, I I like Excel, so I always jump around from Excel to R and Python and stuff like that. But uh, so I don't think Excel could be able to read RDS extensions. Ah, so you mean Excel? Yeah, so because my reason always to save a CSV, I have two reasons for saving CSV mm -hmm. for, for, for transferring to other programs, or I mm -hmm. like CSV also, but I also like CSV because I can read it into Excel. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, if I'm to change to RDS, then uh, that means I might not be able to read it into Excel. Well, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure, but yeah. I got gotcha. So uh, RDS format, as you made mention, you prefer to sometimes you read it in Excel, right? Mm -hmm. You read your CSV in Excel. So I'm not quite sure whether RDS can be read in Excel or not because I'm not trying. Maybe we can try and see. Yeah, we can try and see that. I'm not sure. I mean, Excel should read it because, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, good. Have a, do you have idea about that? No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't have. Yeah, so any question? Okay, so over to you, Alan. I know, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I guess, we, do you have any questions, Ruth? No, thank you.